sugar uh, and put on top of uh, Miasat 3D, which is the upper passenger. And the whole stack was then assembled on top of the launcher. Estamos en directo con el lanzamiento de un cohete Ariane 5 desde Colombo, en la Guayana francesa. El cohete es de dos etapas, más dos propulsores sólidos. Estará lanzando dos satélites en órbita. Uno de Malasia y el otro de Corea del Sur. Launchpad, where the, the operations started yesterday to, to prepare the launch. Thank you very much, David. Uh, we should ask to have a Road to Space sticker on the next rocket. That's, that's, sure. my, that's just <laughs> something I would like very much. Uh, it looks like everyone has done an incredible job to make this all happen. If you look up on your screen now, you will have some live images from uh, the Guyana Space Center in Kourou. And inside, you have the Ariane 5 launcher. To, uh, inside the Ariane 5 launcher, you have two very special telecommunication satellites, MISAT 3D and GSAT 24, who are both waiting patiently for the green light to lift off. We are now exactly two minutes and 50 seconds from the liftoff. What are the next steps before the launch? Yes, uh, so right now, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the final tests are being done. Uh, all the uh, valves uh, are starting to, to be open and to be checked. And uh, yes, in, in a few minutes, the, the control of the, of the operations will be handed over to the launcher. So we will have the, the we're watching the countdown two minutes away from the, the, the launch. Um, just a question, we are focusing now on the liftoff, but after that, the flight is as important as the liftoff. Yes, of course, the, the flight is, is the important part. The difference is that uh, up to the liftoff, uh, we can stop things. Uh, if we see something that, uh, that uh, we see an issue. After liftoff, it's the, the onboard computer who will manage the entire flight and uh, up to the end, up to the separation of the satellites. And have you ever been inside the control room during a launch? Yes, I have been in the Jupiter room, but I have uh, mostly been in the CDL3 room, uh, which is the bunker located uh, close to the launch pad. In this control room, we have the operation quality and engineering teams that are, that are following the last operations. And by the way, I take the opportunity to say hi to them, even if I know that at this time they are fully focused on what they're doing. Let I don't know if we have uh, the possibility to watch the Jupiter room, because we see all the people in the Jupiter room moving to the windows. Well, uh, this the is our, those are the people. Attention pour moins une minute. So we just we just had an image of an image of people watching. Yes. Because people are attending over no, there. I zero moins une minute. Yes. One minute from the liftoff. That's right. DDO has just announced the countdown. Let's immediately go to the green panel on our screen. Make sure all is good, David. Yes, yes, for the time being everything continues to be green, so uh, we're still go for lunch. And now we are 42 seconds from the ignition. So this is the moment we've been all waiting for. Let's watch, let's cross fingers, and let's, let's enjoy the show because it's always incredible. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage de EAP, décollage. Propulsion nominale, tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux.
Well, we have just seen Ariane 5 disappear into space. Do stay with us, everyone, because what's going to happen next is as crucial as the launch. This is, of course, the moment when the two satellites, GSAT-24 and MIRSAT-3D, are placed into orbit. David, you are our space expert tonight. Ariane 5 still has a long way to travel before the separation of the two satellites. Where and when will this happen, and how many kilometers away from the launch site? Yes, we're, we're not quite there yet, yes. Um, MIASAT 3D, we will separate from the launcher in about 30 minutes, uh, 1,200 kilometers nominal, nominal. out of Kenya. And uh, GSAT 24 will separate about 10 minutes later above the Pacific Ocean, about 38,800 kilometers. I imagine that everything is minutely calculated and programmed so that the satellites find their position themselves. So what can you tell me, David, is the... Everything is controlled by the onboard computer on the launcher. So the team in Kourou, uh, this is what we are hearing right now. They are receiving data from the launcher through the tracking stations, and they are checking that everything is, uh, accord is going according to, to what was foreseen. Well, I'm just focusing on those images, incredible yeah, images. Incredible. We're just uh, watching. So it was really impressive. And it's really night, 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 nice night. Yes, yes, it's, it's uh, so clear dreamy. skies. Just before the, the satellites find their, their fun. I'm interrupted because we, are, we, we have are video, hearing. everything is okay. Yes. Uh, before the satellites find their position in orbit, uh, 36,000 kilometers above our head, David, what should we be focusing on? So right now, yeah. yes, we, we just EAP. had the separation of the boosters. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yes, yeah. we have very good images tonight. We have. Uh, That's the first time we see it skies. so clearly. The That's first time incredible. It really is. So the launcher is at an altitude of about 70 kilometers and traveling about 7,000 kilometers per hour right now. We will also. We've just had the um, the DDO has announced the uh, the fairing separation. Yes. So why we don't need it anymore? Now the, the launcher has now reached an altitude uh, around 110 kilometers where the atmosphere is really thin and therefore we get rid of the fairing which was there to protect the satellites uh, from the atmosphere and from the liftoff. So it's not already done, I'm confused. It's not already done, it will happen. It, we, it should happen shortly, yes. It should happen shortly and you have an earpiece. An earpiece. And yes. so you're directly connected to Kuru. So you have... There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Well, for all of you who have just joined us on Road to Space, the Ariane 5 rocket has just left the Guiana Space Center in Kuru three minutes ago. And tonight we have two very special passengers on board, one from Miasat, Malaysia's first satellite operator, and the second one from New Space India Limited, which is a public enterprise under the Indian Ministry of Space. And in 20 minutes, MIASAT 3D will be the first released into space. David, can you tell us a bit more about its future position? Propulsion est nominal. Yes. So MIASAT 3D will, will be in geostationary uh, position, 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. Um, the satellite will be fixed uh, with respect to the ground, as I explained before. And so it will be at, in what we call the 91.5 degree east orbital slot which uh, if you look at the world map, you will see that 91.5 degree longitude east is uh, over the Indian Ocean, about 1,000 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur. So it will be in a perfect position to, to, to serve Pilotage Malaysia and Projectoire Southeast nominal. Asia. Quatre, trois, deux, un. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage de ZAP, décollage. El cohete es de dos etapas, más dos propulsores sólidos. Está lanzando dos satélites en órbita. Uno de Malasia y el otro de Corea del Sur. Los parámetros a bordo son normales. Well, we have just seen Ariane 5 disappear into space. Do stay with us, everyone, because what's going to happen next is as crucial. 
in about 30 minutes, uh, 1,200 kilometers of Kenya. And uh, GISA 24 will separate about 10 minutes later above the Pacific Ocean, about 38,800 kilometers. I imagine that everything is minutely calculated and programmed so that the satellites find their position themselves. So what can you tell me, David, is the role of the team in Kourou at this stage? Yes, indeed. On the low part of the screen, what is this? So yes, you have there the, the, the altitude uh, of the launcher at this time. So you see it's about 160 kilometers. The distance from the launch pad, uh, which is about yes, 700 kilometers. And, uh, and the speed, which uh, right now is uh, getting close to uh, five kilometers per second, yes. Well, we'll see the replay um, later on in the program, but Ariane 5 will have a long flight tonight, as I said before. Together, we will follow all the different stages together until the separation of both satellites, satellites and the acquisition of Miasat 3D in approximately 45 minutes. Earlier, we mentioned this flight was the first of the year for Ariane 5. So, David, how many flights does Ariane 5 approximately make per year? Well, in past years, Ariane 5 has flown on average six times per year. Of course, with the recent COVID crisis, the launch rate has decreased, and we had three launches in 2020 and three more in 2021. Thanks, by the way, to the big effort of all the teams in this difficult situation. Of course, Ariane 5 is not the only rocket to take off from the Guiana Space Centre every year. How many rockets take off from Kourou annually? Well, in, in recent years, again, with, with COVID, we have had about seven launches per year. Uh, but before that, we had as many as 11 or 12 launches per year. Wow, OK. Well, when it comes to large spaceports, there are often different advantages relating to both the site and the location. But what about Kourou? Why is it one of the most efficient and effective launch sites in the world? Well, with its location, which is very close to the equator, Kourou uh, offers the launchers an extra push when going to space, when going towards the east, thanks to the rotation of the Earth. So this is a great advantage when going into geostationary orbit, like it is the case today. This push, together with the low inclination orbits that can be reached, is a great advantage for the customers because they will use less fuel to, to go into orbit. And also the geography makes it uh, possible to launch towards the north, towards the east. So all kinds of orbits are, avail are possible to be reached uh, from Kourou. Okay, and David, while, while you were explaining us, we hear the DDO announcing uh, Natal acquisition. Just a word about that, please. Yes, yeah, so Natal, as you see on the, on the screen, is uh, a tracking station that is located in, on, in the east of uh, Brazil. And so this is the tracking station that is now receiving the information from the launcher. Again, as we move east,